It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, FSN Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Monday night to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers at home after a horrific weekend at Angel Stadium, and the Dodgers back against more familiar foes, the Milwaukee Brewers, who beat them two out of three in the opening series of the year. However, that's not been the story. Ever since the Brewers came into the National League back in 1998, the Dodgers have won 22 of their 31 meetings. Here at Dodgers Stadium, they've won eight of the last ten. A local boy, Jeff Supon, coming in, a graduate of Crespi High School over in the Valley, and Supon will be going up against Brett Tomko, who is seven and one in his career against Milwaukee. We'll get to the ball game. We'll have it all coming up for you right after this. We are minutes away from Dodger baseball here at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers hosting the Milwaukee Brewers. Once again with Steve Lyons, Kevin Kennedy, I'm Patrick O'Neill. These guys like the Brewers before the season started. We have that on tape somewhere. Get your players to watch for tonight's game. Kevin. Well, everybody for the Milwaukee Brewers, but one guy hitting down there in the sixth spot that can actually launch the baseball is Jeff Jenkins, number one pick out of the University of Southern California in 1995. And he's one of those lean back guys and let him fly, Steve, because he's got power to all fields, and especially opposite field, and he can do that to dead center and left center. So you get in his wheelhouse, there it is again, lean back. Back legging it. <laughs> he's back legging it, all right. I think for the Dodgers, the guy to watch in tonight's ball game is Russell Martin. Russell goes down to that interleague series, three games against Anaheim. Only has three hits. It almost felt like a, a mini slump, but he did hit 300. He was three for 10 during that series. But Jeff Supon, he's got about 15 different pitches, but a lot of them are hard. If he challenges Russell with any kind of hard stuff, I think he can handle and He might see Russell hit some balls hard tonight. Well, a lot of changes for the Dodgers, mixing up that, uh, that line of great. He says, hey, just sometimes a little change helps things out. So we'll see how that one works out. We will be here, of course, for the post-game show as soon as the game is over. We'll see you then. Up next, Vince Scully with the call. A couple of righties on the hill. Brett Tomko, Jeff Supar. We'll see you later. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Gatorade. It's in the MLB. Is it in you? by Southwest Airlines with more flights to more places than ever before. Southwest is taking low fares farther. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Hi everybody and a very pleasant Monday night to you wherever you may be. The Dodgers and the Milwaukee Brewers meeting for the fourth time this year. You may or may not remember the Dodgers opened up the season in Milwaukee and the Brewers beat them two out of three. However, the Dodgers have beaten the Milwaukee Brewers here at Dodgers Stadium eight of the last ten times over a three year stretch. And ever since Milwaukee came to the National League in 1998, the Dodgers have beaten them 22 out of 31 games. For the Dodgers trying to get over a terrible weekend in Anaheim, the only consolation, they come home still in first place, one game against the San Diego Padres. So it's the Dodgers and the Brewers opening up this homestand. And remember, the Brewers will be followed by the Cubs on the weekend. Here's the way Milwaukee stacks up. Ricky Weeks opens up at second with young Gwynn, Tony in right field, J.J. Hardy at short, Prince Fielder at first, Johnny Estrada the catcher, Jeff Jenkins who is the senior man on the club in left field, Bill Hall in center, a fellow who has at one time played for the Dodgers, Craig Council at third, and the local boy, Jeff Supon. On the mound for the Dodgers, Brett Tomko, who brings in a rather remarkable record lifetime, even though he is one and four this year, he is five and zero in the last four years as a starter against Milwaukee, and overall he is seven and one. In fact, the number two pitcher who was tougher on Milwaukee in some sense, rather than Brett Tomko, was the opposing pitcher tonight, Jeff Supon. Supon lifetime against Milwaukee 12 and 2. So it was the old case if he can't beat them join them and they signed Jeff Supon to a super contract Christmas Eve last year. 
So we're about ready to go. And for Milwaukee, it's certainly change in fortune in the sense that opening day when the Dodgers travel to Milwaukee, seven of the nine men who started that opening day game were from the Milwaukee farm system. Milwaukee with a payroll of about 72 million. And it was interesting to point out that last year, no team with a payroll of 60 million or less had a winning record. So if you got it, you have to spend it. And Ricky Weeks, followed by Gwynn and Hardy in that order. And Ricky takes the strike and the count 0 and 1. Weeks had surgery on his wrist last August to repair a damaged tendon sheath. He has scar tissue in there and it's been bothering him. They gave him a four day rest and the doctors warned him it's going to take a while before he can get that wrist acting up the way it should be. So he has been struggling and hitting just 232. But nevertheless he is indeed a catalyst for this ball club. Ricky fouls it away and a one ball one strike count. Out of Daytona Beach and out of Monte Springs in Florida. He went to school at Southern University started playing baseball at the age of five and a couple of infielders really caught his fancy Robbie Alomar and Ozzie Smith. The one two pitch slider is hit straight into center field for a base hit. So Ricky Weeks opens up and hits the slider and straightens it out and with a runner at first the batter will be Tony Gwynn. Here are the Dodgers defensively Garcia Parra and Ken for call LaRoche Gonzalez Pierre and Defier the battery of Tomko and Martin and the Dodgers had such a bad series in Anaheim that they are now last in fielding. They had a total of six errors in the three games with the Angels 18 errors in the last five games and the batter now Tony Gwynn Jr. and takes a strike. And the count 0 and 1. So for Tony Gwynn, all of a sudden that catches your attention. The fact that the son of the great one is here and playing and doing well, hitting 360. Tom go off the rubber. Ricky Weeks over there at first base. Runs well. He has stolen seven out of nine. So Tony Gwynn waiting. Out of his stretch goes Tom Go, the left hand hitter takes inside at the rib cage, one ball and one strike. Tony is left handed all the way. He was a fine basketball player, drafted, but opted to go to San Diego State. Then, after his junior year, he finally signed with the Brewers. Here's the 1 1 pitch on the way. Weeks goes, hit and run foul ball off third, back into the stands, and the count 1 and 2. So Ricky Weeks took off hit and run play. Ned Yost was a backup catcher for the Milwaukee Brewers back in 1982 and they are celebrating that year. The year that they won the pennant but lost in the World Series his fifth year as Brewers manager. And there are a lot of people thinking about this club and trying to compare it to that team back in 1982 for instance. They would look at starting pitchers Ben Sheets and Chris Capuano and liken them to Pete Vukovic and Mike Caldwell. Soft line drive to Kent. No further play. One away. You could follow it on. Francisco Cordero, who's been absolutely phenomenal coming out of the bullpen. He is 17 for 17. So in Milwaukee, they say, well, okay, that would bring up Raleigh Fingers. Then you have a switch hitting catcher on this club Johnny Estrada. Well the 82 club had a switch hitting catcher Ted Simmons. And so it goes as J.J. Hardy a one man bang steps in and takes ball one. Nice block by Russell Martin. Also at first base two big guys Prince Fielder and if you go back 25 years Cecil Cooper. In center field Bill Hall go back to 82. Gorman Thomas and with J.J. Hardy and Weeks you think about Robin Yount and Jim Gantman at least on paper here's the 1 0 pitch and Hardy takes off the plate one ball and one strike 
There are a host of really good shortstops in the National League. J.J. Hardy, who was drafted by Milwaukee, and then Oakland drafted Barry Zito. The 2 0 pitch is swung on and whacked to left. Down the line in the corner and gone. Foul ball. Just down the line and turn foul. Watching third base umpire Randy Marsh. And Randy threw a right hand to the air as he spun around to look into foul territory. So Hardy came so close, A, to hitting the foul pole and also hitting his 15th home run. He has 14 with 41 runs batted in. So J.J. Hardy out of Tucson. Brewers nailed him in the number two pick back in 2001. 2-1 two pitch on the way as a fastball for a strike and the count two and two. J.J.'s father Mark a former professional tennis player. Uh, Tom Cole knows all about the hitters great background. His mom once played on the LPGA golf tour. Now the 2-2 two -two pitch to Hardy fastball foul back. In fact they say his mom was ranked just behind Nancy Lopez when she was in college. His older brother well he's a scratch golfer but chose to join the army spend some time in the Middle East. Then saw another tour of duty in Iraq. The pitch to J.J. ground ball to third LaRoche to Kent. It turns it in the dirt to Garcia Parra and Nomar comes up with it and the inning is over five four three. No runs one hit nobody left and at the end of half an inning Milwaukee nothing Dodgers coming up. Tomko turns Milwaukee away thanks to the double play off the bat of J.J. Hardy and now the Dodgers getting ready to come up and here are the names on Grady Little's card. A little switch with Juan Pierre leading off in center field and for the first time this year Raphael for call drops into the number two slot. Then you have Nomar Kent Martin Gonzalez LaRoche hitting seventh at third. Keith here bats eighth and then Brett Tomko. So Juan Pierre coming up against Jeff Supon, born in Oklahoma City, lives in West Hills, went to Crespi Carmelite High School, and was the second round pick by the Red Sox in 1993. One of the reasons, as we mentioned earlier, that Milwaukee signed Supon, he was 12 and 2 in his career against them. And his first pitch to Juan Pierre in for a strike. He signed a big contract on Christmas Eve and at one time he was with Mike Maddox with Boston and Maddox is now the pitching coach for the Brewers. One other thing Supon in his career at Miller Park in Milwaukee was five and oh with an earned run average of one point seven. So he figured to be in their plans and they went out and got him. One one pitch to Juan Pierre a punt on the chalk and it goes foul. So Pierre tries to bunt his way aboard. He'll have to come back and try it again. One and two the count. Pierre hitting 277 with 10 runs batted in. So the Dodgers have played 44 games, and tonight they decide to flip flop Pierre and for call. That, of course, was a big subject under discussion all through spring training. So Rafael is now in the number two slot. And of course he's been such a hot hitter. Pierre was three for 12 in Anaheim. And Supon hesitates as Pierre backs out. So hold on one and two the count. Supon is 6 2 220 and he is 33 years old. Pitch to Pierre swung on and missed down he goes and he might have gone after a bad ball. So Pierre looked like he went after one up and in. Yes, he did. Up around his shoulders. So down goes Pierre. And the batter now will be Raphael for a call. So Supon starts off with a strikeout. Now Raphael for call was four for 12 in Anaheim. And Raphael, as you know, a very hot hitter. So for call trying to keep it going now in the second slot Supon deals off speed breaking ball for a strike. Raphael 
19 hits in his last 32 at bats. That would add up to hitting 594. He hits one foul out of play. Overall batting average 299 for for call and waiting his turn on deck. Garcia Parra. For call, three for nine in the pass against Supon. Pierre was hitting 348 against him. Jeff Reddy into his windup and the strike two pitch on the way, and that's foul back. Though for call is still there, 0 and 2. Dodgers just had no offense in Anaheim. They lost 9 to 1, 6 to 2, and 4 to 1. So the Angels scored 19 to the Dodgers 4. 0 and 2 to count. Supon comes back and flips it low. One ball and two strikes. Supon is a 10 year veteran. Originally signed by the Red Sox, came up in 1996 for the so called cup of coffee. Again in 97, then went to the Diamondbacks, then over to the Royals, the Pirates, the Red Sox, and three years with the Cardinals. And a roller by the mound, charging, backhanding, Ricky Reeks, but he doesn't have a grip on it and he can't throw. The Weeks double clutching, and Raphael for call is aboard with what we assume will be an infield single. And the batter now will be Nomar Garcia Parra. So for call gets himself a base hit. Weeks just could not get that ball out of the glove in time. And the Dodgers get an infield single and Nomar checking in. Garcia Parra has not had much luck against Supon hitting 240. Jeff set at the belt ready and delivers fast ball but it's low ball one one and oh. Nomar hitting 289 with a home run 26 runs batted in. He hit 250 over the weekend three for 12. No score bottom of the first inning one out. A look by Supon turns throws to first for call back on the bag. Raphael a threat to go. He has stolen five out of seven. Of course Pierre when he was the leadoff man had stolen 15 out of 20. One and oh the count to Nomar. Supon again ready and Jeff delivers fastball fouled away. One ball and one strike. Supon and talking about growing up said as a little league ball player when things went badly he would cry. Then if he wasn't making fun of batters but he was just upset. But his sister a former volleyball player at Cal State Northridge she's about 10 years older than he is. She was the one who kind of taught him how to calm down under pressure. The one one pitch is instead another throw to first. And as Jeff Supon said I really learned a lot about mental attitude from her. He had a scholarship to go to UCLA but opted to sign with the Red Sox. As he said I only thought of one thing that to being a professional baseball player. Throw to first back on the bag is for call. Jeff is also making a lot of money now but it wasn't too long ago his first job he was a dishwasher. It happened that his father was the chef at the restaurant Then later on he was a stringer for the daily news getting box scores got ten dollars an hour. Jeff ready now in the one one pitch and no more holds up it's low and inside ball two two and one. So Jeff Supon with the natural nickname of soup or soupy on deck Jeff Kent no score bottom of the first inning. Supon straightens up looks over his shoulder at for call two one pitch no more fouls it back into the screen he was properly jammed two and two the count now Supon wants to talk to his catcher Johnny Estrada tomorrow night game two it'll be Ben Sheets going up against Randy Wolf and then Wednesday night the finale of the series Chris Capuano and he'll go up against Brad Penny Thursday is an off day. And then the Cubs will come in starting Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon. Then the Dodgers go on the road. 
2 2 pitch on the way and no more fouls that back. Still two and two. Dodgers beginning the night one game in front of San Diego. But of course the Western Division figures to be knotted all year long. Two and two the count. Supon set delivers fastball on the hands and Garcia Parra fights it off and it's still two and two scores in the Western Division the Rockies lead the D-backs two to one in the fourth inning that's Aaron Cook and Brandon Webb Astros Giants just getting underway Chris Sampson and Noah Lowry the Padres have the day off tomorrow night the Cubs will be in San Diego. 2 2 pitch on the way, and Nomar pops that one up. Going out to get it on the rim is Ricky Weeks and makes the catch. So all of the pitches were right up in and on uh, Garcia Parra. He kept trying to fight him off and popped it up. Basement. Never had a Number chance 12. to Jeff extend Kent. his arm. So with two down in the first inning, Jeff Kent coming up. Kent has had success against Supon. Hitting 361 against him with two home runs. Jeff overall 286 with half a dozen home runs, 23 runs batted in. Kent had a long weekend, two for 11. Did have a home run. Supon set, infield shifting around towards third, and he fouls it away. Ricky Weeks is still on his side of second base, but he is almost behind the bag. The shortstop Hardy plays deep on the rim and deep at third of course is Craig Council. The Brewers moving Bill Hall a little bit. Bill was playing a little more towards right center and they move him the other way. So he's just about straight away in center field. Strike one pitch on the way to Kent swung on line drive coming up for it diving for it and making the catch is Bill Hall. Now a minute ago that's a base hit. They just moved him from right center slightly over and bam the ball is hit right at him and he makes a nice catch going face first into the grass and at the end of an inning no score. The Brewers and Dodgers no scores. We go to the second inning. Jeff Supon made 18 pitches. There were eight foul balls, and during his at bat, Nomar fouled off five to make him work a little harder. He's sitting alongside of the pitching coach, Mike Maddox. And now Big Prince Fielder checks in. Tomko delivers, and it's a strike. Fielder is six feet tall, 260 pounds, born in Ontario, lives in Florida. Number one pick by the Brewers five years ago, and it's low one ball, one strike. He has a dozen home runs. Last year, he broke the major league record for the most home runs in a rookie season by a son of a major leaguer. You know, Jose Cruz Jr., in his rookie year, hit 26. Well, Prince hit 28. The next one to him is inside. Though the big man waiting on a three and one count. He was named Prince after a great uncle, as well as the somewhat enigmatic rock star, David by his mom. And the pitch foul back. Prince had signed a letter of intent to go with Arizona State, but the Brewers were able to nab him, a number one pick. And he was a a rug rat in the clubhouses. Following things around. Ken Griffey Jr. was his favorite player. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Swung on. A towering drive to right. Ethier's just going to see how far up the pavilion it goes. And it went three quarters of the way up the pavilion. Underneath where the number 42 in memory of Jackie Robinson hang. What a bomb by Fielder. And just like that, the Brewers take a one to nothing lead. Interesting note the difference between these two clubs. For instance, the Brewers have now hit 59 home runs. That's two and a half times as many as the Dodgers. And they score their runs in a different way. 
the Dodgers score almost 38 percent of all of their runs on singles but the Brewers are the other way around. Now the 1 0 pitch is pulled foul outside of first down the line and a one ball one strike count. Boy French fielder just rocketed one three quarters of the way up the pavilion maybe 10 rows from the top. What a blast. He hit it as far as you'd expect a big man to hit it. And Johnny Estrada, the switch hitting catcher, fouls it away. One and two the count. So with his 28 last year, he has 13 right now. And this is only the Brewers' 45th game. Six feet, 260, and he got all of the 260 in that one. Estrada waiting in the one and two count. He swings, pulls a hopper to Garcia Parra, and Nomar takes it to the bag, one away. The Brewers were really Brewers. struggling. They had lost seven out of nine, and they were trailing to Minnesota. And Jeb Jenkins had a big day, including his 200th career home run. While Jeb Jenkins has been with the Brewers, I mean from 1998 through last year he's been involved not he personally so often but nevertheless he has seen the Brewers lose 820 games and now this year he is delighted he drives one to left field but that's playable Gonzalez is there and makes the catch and we have two down here in the second inning. The so Jenkins a fly ball to left. Bill and now Hall. Bill Hall coming up. The so Jeff, the veteran, as Prince Fielder said, he's the man on our club. Jenkins goes back to the dugout. Bill Hall, out of Mississippi, lives in Arizona, a sixth round pick back in 1998. A very good athlete takes a strike. So much so, he was basically an infielder, a shortstop, but with J.J. Hardy, they didn't need him there. And they put him into center field. And Bill takes inside one ball and one strike. And last year, it certainly didn't bother him offensively. Bill Hall had 35 home runs, 85 RBIs, and hit a solid 270. 1 1 pitch on the way. Tomko deals down and away. Ball two, two and one. For Hall, well, he'll answer a trivia question. He's the player who hit the very first home run in brand new Bush Stadium in St. Louis. He did it last April. The 2 1 pitch, he swings, doesn't get it, and the count 2 and 2. He has changed his batting stance a little bit. He has opened it up a wee bit. That left foot, especially, almost pointing to the pitcher. And the 2 2 pitch is on the inside corner, strike three call. So Tomko gives up the home run, then retires the side. Big Prince living up to that name fielder as he hit that tremendous smash into the pavilion in right center field. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's the Brewers one and the Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the second, one to nothing in favor of Milwaukee, and Russell Martin takes a strike. Prince Fielder almost hit one to Pasadena, and it's 1 0 Brewers. The strike one pitch to Russell Martin is off the plate. We mentioned earlier, Dodgers get about 38% of all their runs on singles. The Brewers score more than 44% of their runs on home run. That's the highest in the National League, second highest in baseball. Now the 1 1 pitch to Russell Martin swung on lifted to right field slightly over to right center moving over is Tony Gwynn to make the catch and just like that one away. And that'll bring up Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez. So Luis Gonzalez ready to check in one nothing Milwaukee Gonzo hitting 259. Four home runs, 13 runs batted in. Against Supon, Gonzo hitting 333 with a home run. So Supon looks down the barrel to get a sign into the windup. Right handed deals, flips a breaking ball in for a strike. 
And a count 0 and 1. Now Supon ready and his strike one fastball is low and inside. One ball and one strike. Supon, three brothers and a sister. His dad, a retired air traffic controller who became a gourmet chef in his retirement years. Jeff again delivers a little low, though he's fallen behind two and one. Jeff into the windup. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way, and he works it outside, though he's behind now three and one. When the Brewers signed him, they signed him for forty two million dollars over a four year period. Jeff was very big in the postseason for the Cardinals and Gonzo takes ball four. So a runner at first one out and Andy LaRoche coming up. For the Dodgers at the third base. LaRoche hitting 259 and certainly one of the things that impresses Andy has walked a dozen times and struck out only four. So he's been able to certainly put the ball in play. Supon looks in to get a sign, leading one to nothing. LaRoche waiting, Jeff deals, fastball strike, and the count 0 and 1. Interesting that they would match up against each other. Brett Tomko and Jeff Supon. Both pitchers having given Milwaukee a very bad time in their careers. Strike one pitch on the way, and that's low and outside, one ball and one strike. There is a beach ball loose in left center, so timeout. Our beach ball boy goes out to get it, and he's got a long run. The so timeout for the moment. Milwaukee comes in here in first place. They've been in first place for 39 of the 51 days. So just as for the first time in 11 years, the Angels and Dodgers played each other each in first place. Same applies here. LaRoche a chopper back at third, the long throw from the line for one, and that's all. The council did the best he could. The ball was not hit that hard. So LaRoche hits into the fourth play, and with two out, Andre Ethier will be coming up. Craig right Council number rattling the Andre foul line, Ethier. got it down to Weeks, and we have two out. So Council, who can give you a pretty good job at second, short, and third, playing third tonight, still chewing tobacco, we're sorry to say. And here is Andre Ethier. Supon looks in. Ethier two for ten in Anaheim, hitting 277, and goes late and foul down the left field line in the seats. Oh, and won the count to Andre. He has really picked up playing the last 34 games. He's hit over 300 during that stretch. Three home runs, 22 runs batted in. The leaders on the Dodgers. 26 RBIs, and that would be Garcia Parra and Martin. So Andre waiting. Out of a stretch goes Supon, and the strike one pitch low and inside. One ball and one strike. Last couple of years, the Dodgers have won eight of ten from Milwaukee here, out hitting the Brewers by over 50 points. One and one the count. Supon ready and delivers, and it's popped in the air, foul off third. Council just across the line, waiting and makes the catch for the out. So the Dodgers get a walk and nothing else, leave one, and at the end of two, it's one nothing Milwaukee. Milwaukee leading the Dodgers one to nothing, a lead off second inning home run by Prince Fielder, and now in the third, Milwaukee will have Craig Council, Jeff Supon, and then Ricky Weeks. Craig Council graduated from University of Notre Dame in 1992 with a degree in accounting. The pitch to Craig a strike, and he was quoted as saying, I hope I never have to use it. Well, 
He started his professional career in 92 and here he is still at it and grounds one just foul outside of first and the count runs now to 0 and 2. Craig Council will be 37 years old in August came up to the big leagues with the Rockies in 1995 and then to stay in 97 played briefly for the Dodgers in 1999. The strike two pitch on the way and Craig takes inside. You could spot Council in a snowstorm because of the way he holds the bat. I mean, he looks like he's holding onto a strap in the New York subway, his hands up over his head, the bat extended and wiggling, and he promptly swings and grounds one into center field. Base hit. Council, big turn at first and holding. So Craig is still at it. And with a runner at first Pitcher and nobody out, Jeff the batter will be Jeff Supon. One reason Council is in there tonight certainly is done pretty well against Brett Tomko. That's his ninth hit and hitting about 300 against the right hander. So here is Supon. Dodgers look bunt. Jeff waiting. Does have a home run in his career. And Tomko off the bag. Supon, by the way, does not have a sacrifice. Supon hit his home run two years ago. Shows Bunt, gets it down on the chalk, and it goes foul. He hit his home run against Steve Traxel of the New York Mets. So we're in the third. Brewers won, Dodgers nothing. Prince Field to hit one. You could have chopped it up and had about 90 singles as he hit it. Quick count, maybe 10 rows from the top of the pavilion in right field. So Supon tried to bun once. We'll see if he tries to get it down again. 0 and 1 to Jeff. Shows bunt. This time does get it down. Tomko's play has to be the Kent covering. So the sacrifice advances Council to second. And with one out, Ricky Weeks will be coming up so as Supon gets Ricky fives Weeks. in the dugout. Ricky Weeks right handed all the way. And Tomko now down one nothing, trying to keep it there. Ricky and Prince Fielder. Have known each other, it seems like forever. They've known each other since Ricky was about 11. They were teammates on an AAU baseball team. Prince, of course, was their first baseman. And then they worked his way up through the minor leagues together. The pitch is inside, ball one, one and oh. Ricky's father helped him a great deal. He used to videotape all of his bats in the early years and then he'd study it. He wasn't drafted at a high school. He had a scholarship offer from George Washington University and Southern, and he went to Southern. Takes a strike, one and one. Ricky, an even six, 205 pounder. We mentioned earlier he had wrist surgery and the scar tissue this year bothering him a bit. Ricky waiting, trying to pick up counsel from second. One out in the third, one nothing Brewers. Tomko's fastball is turned on and whacked into left field. Gonzo has to go to the bullpen gate to pick it up. It's a long double for Ricky Weeks. That cashes in Council. Boy, you want to talk about a hitter getting his hips out of the way. Ricky Weeks on that swing, and they always talk about turning on a pit. I mean, you'd think he was on a turntable as he was able to turn the hips and hit a bullet. Into the left field corner. The Ricky Weeks doubles in a run, and just like that, the Dodgers find themselves down two to nothing. And the batter will be Tony Gwynn. The Gonzo going all the way to the bullpen gate to retrieve the ball. Young Tony shows bunt, drops one up along third, and it goes foul. The Tony Gwynn just missed. Getting himself a bun single. Tony is an even six and 185, so he will not remind you of his father as far as his weight is concerned. For Tony, 
a difficult act to follow his dad of course a Hall of Famer with over 3,000 hits and an unbelievable 338 major league batting average. So Tony just starting out 24 years old and the strike one pitch on the way he takes a high strike just above the belt 0 and 2. Born in Long Beach lives in Poway. Eddie Collins Junior 66 sons of players in the 3000 hit club then junior with 38 hits and Pete Rose junior had two. The next one is low one ball and two strikes the count. Tony in and out of the box now gets back in again. Tomko hands it aside looks down to get a sign. Now the one two pitch a look at council and the pitch inside and a two ball two strike count. Last year with the Nashville Sounds. Tony hit 300. Four home runs 42 runs batted in. Now the two two pitch coming up. Tom go another look back at second now turns throws to for call not in time. You know with David Bell Prince Fielder and Tony Gwynn the Brewers had three players last season whose fathers combined to play over 6300 games. They had over 6900 hits 655 home runs and over 3200 RBIs during their collective years. Pitch is pulled on the ground. Garcia Parra will take it to the bag and going to the bag at third is Weeks. And the batter now will be J.J. Hardy. Shortstop number seven, J.J. Hardy. If you put Bell Fielder and Gwynn's fathers combined, they had 51 years in the big leagues. So here is J.J. Hardy and his biggest booster is his manager Ned Yo says without a doubt JJ should be the all star shortstop hitting 319 14 home runs 41 RBIs and Hardy takes low ball one one and oh Ned Yost in his fifth year as the skipper and he is a big cheerleader indeed for this young man but shortstops in the National League are amazing really when you think about a position loaded with talent Hardy takes a strike. How about Jose Reyes of the Mets. Hanley Ramirez of Florida. Jimmy Rollins of the Phillies. Edgar Renteria. Rafael for call. Omar Vizquel. Troy Tulowitzki. Stephen Drew. Khalil Green. One one pitch off the plate. Jack Wilson of the Pirates Adam Everett of Houston. It is a position that has a lot of brilliant young players. J.J. 24 he'll be 25 in August. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way. And Hardy has a look at ball three. It's been a long time since we have seen a shortstop lead the league in home runs. And the one name that jumps at you sure the great Ernie Banks. Don't forget the Cubs will be here on the weekend. Two to nothing Brewers top of the third Tomko ready and delivers Hardy holds up on an off speed pitch and it's in for a strike. The three and two the count. So a go ahead run again at third in Ricky Weeks with Prince Fielder on deck. And Hardy hits a fly ball into left center. Very playable. It'll be Luis Gonzalez for the catch. And that's the inning. So Council singles, Weeks doubles him in. He's left to third. And at the end of two and a half innings, two nothing Milwaukee. Milwaukee leading the Dodgers two to nothing, bottom of the third inning. Brett Tomko to start it off looking for his first hit of the year and he takes a strike. Tomko 0 for 10 has struck out eight of those at bats. Right hand hitter. Supon ready and comes back very high one and one. The Brewers are leading the National League 
in victories at home. They are 17 and 7, but they're a break even 10 and 10 on the road. 1 1 pitch fouled off. So the question was could Supon win on the road? Three years ago, if Ned Yost looked it up, Supon won 10 straight before suffering his only loss in his final start on the road. And he was bidding to really get his name in the books as Tomko takes a strike and he's done. Supon would have been just the third pitcher in Major League history to go undefeated on the road while winning 10 or more Center games. Fielders, number nine, Jimmy Key, Juan 10 Pierre. and 0 in 94. Greg Maddox, 13 and 0 with the Braves in 95. Supon also gave the Cardinals a huge chance, remember, to win Game Seven at Shea Stadium in last season's NLCS. Seven innings of two-hit ball, and that was the game later on where Yadier Molina would hit a home run to win it. So with one out, here is Pierre taking a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Two to nothing in favor of the Brewers. Pierre struck out on a pitch up in the first inning. This time pokes one to third. Council smothers it and throws him out. So Pierre taps to third, two away. You know, a ticket to see the Dodgers can be double the fun. A great game in theme park tickets. Saturday at 12.55 when the Cubs are in town. All kids 14 and under receive a ticket to Universal Studios Hollywood. To double your fun, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. Raphael for call. Had a single up the middle, a ground ball that was backhanded by Ricky Weeks, and then he double clutched, couldn't get it out of his glove. Supon ready and deals, and Raphael takes an off speed breaking ball, a curve at 71 for a strike. 0 and 1 the count. Supon works quickly, back with another breaking ball, this time low. One ball and one strike the count. Two runs, four hits for the Brew Crew. No runs, one hit for the Blue Crew. And for call, followed by Garcia Parra. The 1 1 pitch on the way. A little low, ball two, two and one the count. The Brewers have had a fine bullpen. Francisco Cordero, for instance, is 17 for 17 in saves. And if they keep you to three or less, their record is 19 and 0. 2 1 pitch is high, ball three. If the Dodger pitchers allow three or less, the Dodger record is 17 and 2. Now the 3 1 pitch coming up. Supon a long look in, right handed deals, fastball low, ball four. Well, that will be his second walk. He walked Gonzalez in the second inning. And the batter now will be Nomar, who popped up in the first inning. So Garcia Parra, who was 3 for 12 in Anaheim, and the Dodgers are hoping that he'll perk up again at home. He came into this game hitting 365 at home. Russell Martin right back of him at 364. So for call at first, two out, no more waiting. Overall batting average, 287. And Supon's first pitch off the plate, ball one, one and oh. No more, one home run, 26 runs batted in. They have projected, and of course it's just chatter right now, what Nomar will do this year offensively. He swings and hits one foul off to the right out of play, and the count one and one. In the Dodgers' 45th game, Nomar has one home run, 26 runs batted in. They project then he would hit 103 runs batted in and wind up with four home runs. Well, it was about 10 years ago. He had 35 for Boston. One one pitch is instead a throw to first. Nomar, who is usually a first ball fastball hitter, is the only Dodger to see more than five pitches. He saw eight fouling off five of them in the first inning. 
The 1 1 pitch is swung on, hit to right. Going back on the ball is Gwynn. Tony makes the catch, and that will be that. Dodgers leave for call, and at the end of three, Brewers two, Dodgers nothing. In the second inning, Prince Fielder hit a rather memorable home run, certainly forgettable for Tonko. And the ball hit maybe 10 runs or less from the back row of the pavilion in right field. So Big Prince with 13 home runs, 34 runs batted in, checking in. And of course, people who are unaware might ask has there ever been a ball hit out of right field? On top of the roof and out into the parking lot, and the answer is yes. Will Bastardo twice cleared the roof in right field. A line drive foul into the chairs. 0 oh 2 the count of Fielder. Andy hit his, uh, excuse me, Will Bastardo hit his first against Alan Foster and hit the other one against Andy Messerschmidt. Fielder fouls it away again. No balls in two strikes. And of course remember one of the longest home runs hit here was hit last year by Matt Holliday. He hit a ball that hit one of the palm trees back of the wall of the Dodger bullpen. Strike two pitch on the way and Fielder swings down he goes. So he rides the elevator from the penthouse to the basement. Right now, time for our Aflac trivia question. The Brewers' last winning season, 1992. What's the LA Dodger record for most consecutive losing seasons? Do you have any idea? Don't blame you if you don't care to know. And the pitch swung on and fouled away off to the left. 0 oh 1 the count. Two runs, four hits for the Brewers, no runs, one hit for the Dodgers. That was the ground ball by Fercal, backhanded by Weeks, and he couldn't get it out of his glove in time. Johnny Estrada with a one ball, one strike count. John from Northern California, born in Haywood, went to the College of the Sequoias. And as you can imagine, die hard Oakland Raiders fan. John takes outside, two balls, one strike. Johnny originally signed by the Phillies hit 302 last year for the Diamondbacks 2 1 pitch and that's whacked into right center field Ethier going over and this one's in the pavilion and the Brewers lead three to nothing Brett Tomko has always been what they call a fly ball pitcher well two of them have gone out he has now given up five home runs. And the Brewers lead is three to nothing. So home runs by Fielder and Estrada and then Council singled and Weeks doubled him in. So the batter now is Jeff Jenkins. The Gianni Estrada drives it out. For Estrada that would be his sixth home run and Jenkins hits one into right field fielded there by Andre Ethier. Two down in the fourth in the inning. Fielder, Bill Hall. Uh, Gianni Estrada reaches the seats. He had 11 home runs last year and hit 302. So he's a good hitting catcher and a switch hitter at that. So the batter now is Bill Hall. Hall is definitely a threat to hit one out with 35 home runs last year. He takes a strike, 0 and 1. All one of five players to have 35 and 35, and the others got a ton of money. That's a little low. I mean, you're talking about Alfonso Soriano, Carlos Beltran, Carlos Lee, and Aramis Ramirez. Though the the Brewers, when they signed Bill Hall, they spent about 24 million. But those other fellas, Soriano, 136 million, Beltran, 119, Carlos Lee, 100, and Aramis Ramirez, 75. And of course, you'll see 
Soriano and Ramirez this weekend. So we are in the high rent district, friends. One and two, the count to Bill Hall. 27 years old. Off the plate, two and two. Bill will be 28 a couple of days after Christmas. Even six, 210 pounds with that open stance. And he strokes it into left field for a line drive single. So the Brewers are trying to play catch up with Tomko. Remember, he has a lifetime career, seven and one mark against Milwaukee. Five and zero oh in the last couple of years. The opposition, Milwaukee, hitting about 260 against him. What's interesting with Tomko against all of the other teams, he is seven games the wrong way. And yet with Milwaukee, he was five and zero. Oh. So if you believe in the law of average, they're trying to catch up to him, and Craig Council is the hitter. A strike. Three runs, six hits for Milwaukee. No runs, one hit. Of course, can't buy anything with a hit for the Dodgers. And another strike. Bill Hall does not do much running. He has stolen one, but he's been caught three times. Perhaps they would just as soon keep Garcia Parra on the bag. Kent plays right on the rim. 0 oh and 2 off the rubber. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the fourth inning, Jeff Kent, Russell Martin, and Luis Gonzalez. Timeout now, Martin going out to talk. The home runs, and it happened so often, the hitter was ahead in the count. Prince Fielder hit his home run on a three and two pitch. Johnny Estrada hit his home run on a two and one pitch. Oh and two. And got him. The council is caught looking. Strikes out. However, damage done. The home run by Johnny Estrada. And at the end of three and a half innings, it's the Brewers three and the Dodgers nothing. Three to nothing in favor of Milwaukee. And as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Kent Martin and Gonzalez. Johnny Estrada and Prince Field to hit him out, and it brings up the huge difference between these two teams. And they're going to load up the left side on Kent now. Fastball, ball one. Ricky Weeks is directly behind second base. With the two home runs tonight, the Brewers have hit 60 home runs. The Dodgers have 23. In runs scored, the Brewers have 20 more runs than the Dodgers. And each team came into the game with the identical overall batting average of 262. So Ned Yost, whose ball club has been in first place 39 of 51 days, has them five and a half games in front of Houston. The Astros are playing the Giants. That's a strike. Barry Bonds was just at the plate against Houston and walked. Two and one. Two and two. By the way, Barry Bonds, a milestone tonight. 2,900 games in the big leagues. Two nine zero zero. Fastball drilled to center, but it's very playable. And Bill Hall is right there. So Kent has hit the ball hard twice, but right at Hall, the one away. Well, remember the trivia question? Talked about the fact the Brewers' last winning season, 92. What is the L.A. Dodger record? 1967 and 68, 1986 and 87. 87, then the Dodgers surprised. 
World's Championship Club in 88. 0 oh and 1 the count to Russell Martin. Martin like Garcia Parra doing very well especially at home. Came in hitting 364. Though his overall batting average 315. 0 oh and 1. Fastball little dribbler in a hurry is counsel and gets him. Two down in the fourth inning, and the batter now, Luis Gonzalez, who reached on a walk. The Dodgers have had three base runners for call an infield single, the Dodgers' only hit, and a walk to Gonzalez and a walk to Fertal. Though it's early, the Dodgers yet to get a runner at second base. Three nothing Milwaukee in the fourth. Tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf. Wednesday night, Chris Capuano and Brad Penny. And first ball swinging, pop fly, Hardy going out looking for help, and it's Hall. So Gonzalez, a pop fly to Bill Hall in shallow center, and at the end of four, it's 3 0 Milwaukee. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And by Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. The Brewers leading the Dodgers 3 to nothing as we go to the fifth inning. Jeff Supon, Ricky Weeks, and then Tony Gwynn. Three runs, six hits for Milwaukee. Good fastball, 0 and 1. Dodgers have one hit, and even that was a little fluky. Ground ball to the right side, backhanded by Ricky Weeks, and he had trouble, double clutched, and had no play. And that's it. Kent has hit the ball very hard in the first inning. They had just moved Bill Hall, shading him to right center, and they moved him back over towards straightaway center. And he caught that sinking line drive off Kent's bat. One and two the count to Jeff Supon. Tomko seven and one lifetime against the Brewers one and four this year. Jeff giving up two home runs has allowed five. And a fly ball to right field exactly where Ethier was. One away. They did some measurements, I guess. They looked at where Second Prince division. Fielder's ball landed, maybe seven rows from the top in right field. And they estimate that Fielder's home run right under the Jackie Robinson 42, I think it was. So that would be over the other way. Anyway. They said it went 462 feet. Stargell's first home run, the one that took everybody's breath away, it sucked the air out of Dodger Stadium, was 506 feet. And for good measure, to show you they were really serious, 506 feet, six inches. That was in 1969 against right hander Alan Foster. 0 and 1. Mark McGuire hit a home run here against Jamie Arnold. That went to left center field. That was 483. Matt Holliday's ball had hit the the palm tree back of the Dodger bullpen. That was estimated at 481. 0 oh and 2. And ground ball base hit. So a nice bit of hitting by Ricky Weeks. He might have had scar tissue. He might have had a sore wrist, and he might have had four days off because he was four for 27. Well, he Benny comes to Dodger Stadium, Tony and he Quinn. is three for three against Tomko. Two singles and a double. And the batter now will be Tony Gwynn. And Weeks, remember, has stolen seven out of nine.
Gwynn popped up, grounded out, 0 for 2. Three runs, seven hits for the Brewers. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers. Tomko due to bat third when the Dodgers hit in the fifth, and the Dodgers are going to get somebody up in the bullpen. Ball one. One and oh. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Rudy Cienez begins to loosen up. On deck, J.J. Hardy. Fouled off. One and one the count. The Tony Gwynn Jr. Earlier here at Dodger Stadium we had Ken Griffey Jr. who hit home run number 572 in his career tonight against Washington. Pitch out no action. Griffey hit 572 against Lavelle Spania of Washington. Next home run that Griffey hits will time with Killebrew for eighth place. He also is one RBI behind Ernie Banks. And that's pop foul and out of play. One other thing about the rookie, Lavelle Spania, S P E I G N E R. He fills out a membership card to the Ken Griffey Jr. Home Run Club, and he became the 364th pitcher to give up a home run to Griffey Jr. Two and two. Time. Bonds has not done anything yet up north. Last at bat, he walked in his. 2900th game. Brewers three, Dodgers nothing. One out, fifth inning. And there goes the runner, a bad throw in the center field. The Russell Martin really cut one loose. And on the play, Ricky Weeks will be credited with a stolen base. Or they're going to rule it a wild pitch because he was not in motion. And when the ball got away, only then did Weeks take off. So settle for a wild pitch, but one way or another, the Brewers now have a runner in scoring position with the Brewers leading the Dodgers three to nothing in a full count to Tony Gwynn. And that was down and in to take care of him. Two out. So now here comes J.J. Hardy. You know it's not too late to get season tickets to Dodger home games for as low as four dollars a ticket. Season ticket package is available now, more affordable than you think. You can put together a mini season ticket plan customized for your schedule. So visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. Well, here is Hardy. JJ waiting and a strike. Talking about him possibly leading the league in home runs. And Ernie Banks, back in 1958, hit 47. Ernie Banks in 1960 hit 41. On the corner. 0 oh and 2 to JJ Hardy. Hardy was a good high school pitcher. In fact, he was clocked as high as 92, so some teams considered drafting him as a pitcher. But then he started to swing the bat, and everybody went, uh oh. Half swing gets him. So Tomko fights his way out of a corner by striking out Gwynn and Hardy, leaving Weeks, and he walks off down 3 0. Milwaukee holding on to a three to nothing lead and the Dodgers trying to come back here in the fifth inning. Andy LaRoche takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. So LaRoche followed by Ethier and then Tomko or a hitter. 
because the Dodgers get the bullpen up again. They had Rudy Sienez throwing in the top of the fifth inning. And they get a right hander Chad Billingsley getting up here in the bottom of the inning. So Tomko is due to bat third. We'll see what happens. That's ball two to Andy LaRoche. Andy hit into a force play in the second inning. Yeah, the turnover at third. 15 third baseman in the last three years. A drive to center. Hall going back at the track. Well, the old story about warning track power. And Hall now has made three putouts of the last four. And he has four putouts so far in the game. And the batter, Andre Ethier. But Bill Hall, an infielder, and converted to the outfield, and he's done remarkably well. But then you look back and you find out he played football, basketball, baseball, and track. And you can understand he really has some athletic genes, and he looks very much at home in center field. One ball and no strikes to Andre Ethier. And Brett Tomko out on deck. It might be a question as what the Dodgers do according to Ethier as he breaks his bat hits a ground ball to Weeks and that'll be the second out. So with the bases empty you assume that Tomko will be coming up and it's a good assumption. Pitcher Brett Tomko. So the Dodgers have one hit and that was a ground ball. It was backhanded by Ricky Weeks and it should have been an out. Weeks was playing for Paul slightly into the hole, went back to his right, backhanded it, and then double clutch, couldn't get the ball out of the glove, and for Call was given a base hit, and that's it. Fouled away, 0 oh, and 1 to count. On deck in the leadoff role tonight, Juan Pierre. Three runs, seven hits for the Brewers, no runs, one hit for the Dodgers breaking ball and a check swing but it'll be on to one ball and two strikes to count to Brett Tomko Supon leading three to nothing. Dodgers have had really three base runners an infield single and two walks. One and two the count to Tomko. Ball two. For Jeff Supon, he had a two hitter. That would be five years ago against Detroit. Went the distance. That is his low hit complete game performance. And that's ball three. He had made 52 pitches in the first four innings. He has two quick outs here in the fifth, but then goes all the way with Tomko. Fastball hit down to Ricky Weeks. And that'll be that. So that's seven in a row retired by Supon, and he walked off leading three to nothing. Did you ever come to Dodger Stadium, get caught in the traffic, and miss the first inning? Well, back in Brooklyn on this night in 1952, if you missed the first inning, forget it. The Dodgers scored 15 runs in the first inning against the Cincinnati Reds. Ironically, the second out in that wild inning, Andy Pafko was thrown out trying to steal third, and Duke Snyder struck out. 15 in the first inning, they beat Cincinnati 19-1. to Let's go back to this one. Tomko working on Fielder. So the home run hitters are back to back. Fielder in the second, Estrada in the fourth. One and one. 
whenever you see the tremendous power of a hitter as fielder displayed in the second inning, remember about the pitcher, so vulnerable out there on the mound. Two and one. Prince, six footer, 260 pounds. Off speed, great change. And Cecil Fielder lunging at it. Two and two the count. Through the first five innings, Tomko made 86 pitches. Though he's into the 90s now, Supon has made only 66 pitches. And nine of the 15 outs through five innings, Supon has made three or less per at bat. Fastball popped up. It will be for call. One away. Let's take a look at Power Unleashed. In the second inning, it was Prince Fielder, and he hit his. Over 460 feet, up there about seven rows from the top of the pavilion. And then Johnny Estrada hit his ball well, but it didn't compare in distance. But nevertheless, it counted the same. So three nothing Brewers. And here is Estrada. So we were talking earlier about in saluting the 25th anniversary of Milwaukee winning the pennant. And losing to the Cardinals. Where they have Estrada, they used to have Ted Simmons, two switch hitting catchers. You could certainly compare Prince Fielder and Cecil Cooper. One and one to count to Estrada. Doug Davis left Milwaukee and went to Arizona, and among others, Estrada came over with Claudio Vargas and Greg Aquino. Vargas is 3 and 0 in eight starts. Fly ball down the left field line. Gonzo in a hurry and foul ground no play. The real estate disappears in a hurry once you get to that foul line. And Gonzo tossing it to the kids out there in the corner. But they all know once they get near the chalk, they're very near to the stands. Two and two. Yeah, there it is. And a foul ball upstairs. Two and two the count. The Dodgers averaging 45,000 a game. The Brewers are averaging 31,000 per game. Two and two. Ball three. Ground foul. One of Tomko's problems has been the leadoff man. Weeks led off the first inning with a single. Fielder led off the second inning with a home run. Council led off the third inning with a single. Now the last couple of innings he's gotten that first hitter. Meanwhile for Jeff Supon, no Dodger leadoff man has reached base. Tomko who made 86 pitches in five innings has now made 14 pitches to get him to 100 and Billingsley is still throwing back of him. And that's a pop fly could be trouble Ethier can't get it. So Estrada a little fly ball dunker into right center field. Jeff Jenkins. And the batter will be Jeff Jenkins. One of those balls tantalizing and found its way. Jeff Jenkins checks in at the plate 0 for 2 tonight. Fly to left fly to right. You may remember Jeff Jenkins went to USC. 
Oh and one. Jenkins has a lot of power hit as many as 34 home runs. Six years ago. Has never driven in 100 he's had 95 94 93. Oh and one. And another strike. Oh and two. Jeb Jenkins hitting his 200th home run. He had five RBIs in the game against Minnesota Sunday. Robin Yount hit 251. Gorman Thomas 208. Cecil Cooper 201. And Jeff with 200. Jenkins came up to the Brewers in 98 and he's been with them ever since. He'll be 33 in July. Lives in Rancho Cordova in California, born in Olympic, Washington. One ball and two strikes. When he was at SC, Number one, he passed up the offer from the Padres who drafted him to go to SC. And he ranked behind only Mark McGuire on the school's career home run list. Three and two. He has nine home runs, 24 runs batted in, and hitting 304. His second year with the Brewer, back in 99, he hit 313. Three and two, one out, Estrada at first. He goes on ball four. For Brett Tomko, that would be his first walk, but it might be his last pitch. Brady Little slowly making his way. Billingsley throwing in the pen. Bill Hall, who was struck out and singled, will be coming up. And we'll wait for Grady to make a move. And he takes the ball and Tomko goes out having made a hundred and seven pitches and we'll be back. Dodger baseball on FSN prime ticket is brought to you by Carl's Jr. Come try the new Buffalo chicken sandwich at Carl's Jr. Spice up your day and by Southwest Airlines with more flights to more places than ever before. Southwest is taking low fares farther. The Brewers trying to add to a three to nothing lead at the expense of Brett Tomko. Even though he is out the runners at first and second are his responsibility. Bill Hall struck out and single coming up. And Chad Billingsley ready to go after him. At second base Johnny Estrada at first Jeff Jenkins. Billingsley 2 and 0 in his 16th game and Russell Martin to talk to him as to how the Dodgers have pitched Paul who by the way has not done much with runners in scoring position. Bill Hall hitting in the seventh slot is hitting just 182 with runners in scoring position. Fastball whacked into left field, base hit. They will stop Estrada, and the bases are loaded with one out. So Bill Hall didn't hang around. Line drive single, and everybody moves up 90. And Trey Council will be coming up. So now Billingsley is in trouble. Great Council, a tough hitter anyway, singled and struck out, scored a run tonight, and hitting over 400 with the bases loaded. And ball one. Brewers three runs, nine hits. The Dodgers no runs, an infield single. Estrada at third, Jenkins at second, Hall at first, one out. That's a strike, one and one. 
So Tomko, who could be charged with more, is out down three nothing. Council, by the way, has two grand slams in his career. One in 97 and another in 98. One and two. Good breaking ball. Billingsley, a strikeout pitcher, and the Dodgers hoping for that. He's averaging better than 10 strikeouts per nine innings. Two and two. After Council comes the pitcher, Jeff Supon. So this is a big at bat for Craig Council, who's hitting 230 with seven runs batted in. Russell Martin shuffling his cards. Fastball hit over the head of Jeff Kent. One run will score, and they'll go station to station. So the Dodgers going through another one of those frustrating moments, so near and yet so far, as Council loops one after the leadoff single by Estrada was a fly ball that dropped amongst several Dodgers. This one just over the leather, and everybody moves up. So Hall to second, Jenkins to third, Estrada brings the run home. It is charged to Tomko, and the Dodgers now trailing four to nothing. And here is Supon with one out. Overpowered on that fastball, 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. Ricky Weeks, three for three on deck. No balls, one strike. 0 oh and 2. Of course, if you're Ned Yost, the worst thing that Supon can do is make contact and maybe hit into a double play to end the inning. One and two, the count. So with one out, Estrada, a pop fly single into right center. Jenkins walk. That was off of Tomko. Hall, a line drive single. And then Council a little flare in the right. All right, Supon strikes out, but that doesn't bother Ned Yost at all. And Ricky Weeks the coming up. Second baseman. Ricky so Weeks. Yost still alive for a potential big inning. Weeks has single, double, singled again. So in his leadoff role, three for three. After coming out of a four for 27 slump. By having four days off. So a three hit game ties him in his young career. And a strike. So Jenkins at third, Hall at second, Council at first. Four runs, ten hits. Ricky does not have a slam in his career. Nice save by Russell Martin. That would have been a wild pitch and a run. Billingsley does not have a wild pitch. Probably a credit indeed to Russell Martin. Four nothing Brewers. Sixth inning. Weeks, the seventh man to come to the plate for Milwaukee. Fouled away off to the right out of play. One and two the count. So Weeks trying to add to it. Those who watch him play all the time compare Ricky Weeks, they hope to, like a Willie Randolph. And he has some power. Eight home runs last year, but he had 13 the year before, and he is five right now, so they have to be very careful with him. One and two. Two and two. So Billingsley picking up for Tomko, who made 107 pitches. 
Weeks has not been a big guy with runners in scoring position, batting only 184. So the deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out, three on, four nothing Milwaukee, fouled away. And looking at Weeks' numbers closely, you find out he has struck out 32 times, walked 21. Five home runs, 14 runs batted in. Ricky out of Daytona still lives in the state. On the hands, line drive that gets through. One run will score, two runs will score. Stopping at third is Council, and that line drive almost got a piece of Chad Billingsley. Though add two, it is now a three run inning, and Milwaukee leads six to nothing. And that was too close for comfort. We were talking before about the power coming back. That thing really turned Billingsley around. And you shudder to think of someone with the power of a Prince Fielder or any of those other big guys. So Ricky Weeks has a career game. Four hits, two runs batted in. It is six to nothing in favor of the Brewers. Now they have to worry about Weeks even stealing. And the batter is Tony Gwynn. And a foul ball off third out of play. Boy, that thing hit up the middle. Mm. Dodgers have had a couple this year. Derek Lowe almost had his head taken off. Randy Wolf was flattened on a line drive comebacker. Mark Hendrickson almost got cut in half in his game in Anaheim. And now that ball hit back at Billingsley. Not sure how much of that ball Billingsley even saw. He tried to get his hands up defensively, but boy, that was too close for comfort. 0 oh, and 2 to Gwynn, who is 0 for 3. Popped up, grounded out, and struck out. Six runs, 11 hits for the Brewers. And a little slicing fly ball down the line, foul ground, no play. Gonzo, to his credit, certainly tried to make a play. Still 0 to the count. So, as we had mentioned earlier about Ricky Weeks, his career high had been a three hit game. And tonight, this is one for his book, his first four hit game. He's had three singles and a double. 0 and 2 to Tony Gwynn. And a little foul ball. Still 0 and 2. In the inning with one out, Estrada, a pop fly single to right center. Jenkins walked. That was all for Tomko. Hall, a line drive single to left. Council a little flare over the head and glove of Kent and then the line drive by weeks and that's a whack into right center and there's nobody there it'll go all the way to the wall scoring easily is Council easily coming in is weeks and stopping at second is Gwynn and it's a runaway now Milwaukee eight and the Dodgers nothing. The Chad Billingsley is really being pushed around now. He has given up three singles and a double. And the game is broken wide open. The Brewers hanging a high five here in the sixth. So Gwynn drives in two. And that's ball one to J.J. Hardy. Rudy Sienes gets back up again in the bullpen. Interesting with eight runs and 12 hits, 
Hardy is 0 for 3, and he's their big hitter. One and one. Interesting, too, the Dodgers gave up eight runs to the Cardinals the other night. Pujols didn't get a hit. Gave up nine runs to the Angels the other night. Vladimir Guerrero didn't get a hit. They've given up eight tonight, and Hardy is yet to connect. So eight runs and 12 hits for the Brewers. And the Dodgers, no runs, one hit. Padres are not scheduled to play. So unless the Dodgers come back with a miracle finish, their lead will be a half a game over San Diego. One and two. Fouled away. Hardy, 14 home runs, 41 runs batted in, and the big man on the club hitting 315. Hardy was on the U.S. team for the Futures game just before the All-Star game four years ago. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. So Hardy is on the outside looking in as he strikes out a second time, but not before the Brewers get five. And among other things, Ricky Weeks has a four hit game. And it's eight nothing Brewers. It is all the Brew Crew. Eight to nothing. The Dodgers with only one hit. And a strike to Juan Pierre, who's leading off tonight. He is struck out and grounded out. The Supon with a huge lead and an 0 and 2 count. Straight change down and away. High foul out of play. Tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf. Wednesday night, Chris Capuano and Brad Penny. Oh and two to one, hitting 274. Pulled on the ground. Nice hop for fielder. So one out and here's the Dodger with the only hit. And it wasn't much but he'll take him. For call hit a chopper to the right side of the infield and to the right of Ricky Weeks. That was in the first inning. Weeks went to his right backhanded the ball and then couldn't get it out of the glove couldn't get a grip and for call beat the play. That's the only Dodger hit. Last time up Raphael walked. Ball one. Fielder and counsel about even with the bag in case he's thinking bun. One and one. Raphael hitting 303. Giants leading Houston 3 nothing. They're in the top of the seventh inning. Another strike, one and two. Dodgers lost two out of three to Milwaukee the opening series. When the Dodgers were swept by the Angels, it was only the second time this year they've been swept in a series. The Giants did that to him in April. Two balls, two strikes. All three. So Jeff Supon, three and four lifetime against the Dodgers, two and two 
here at Dodger Stadium and leading eight nothing. Line drive down the left field line clean as a whistle extra base hit. Jenkins gets it back and down the second base goes for Paul. So a one out double for Raphael. He has the only two hits against Supon. And Nomar will be coming up. He can make all the announcements in the world. And there's always somebody who's going to reach over and interfere. And I believe they will now ask that particular person to leave the ballpark. The so timeout for the moment. Now we're ready. Here is Nomar popped up, flied to right. Fastball fouled away. 0 and 1. Somewhere down there. Eight runs, 12 hits, no errors for the Brewers, no runs, two hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Fastball, one and one to count to Nomar. Supon came in with a record of five and four. One ball and one strike. Ball two. Supon has allowed two hits, he has walked two. He's not overpowering people at all. He has two strikeouts, and one of them was Tomko. Two and one to Nomar. Fouled away. Two and two. Coming into this game, Garcia Parra was hitting 240 against Supon. Pulled off the glove of the diving council. Her call is going to keep on coming in, and he will score on the single by Nomar. It was actually a great stop by Craig Council. Otherwise, that ball goes down the line. I always wonder, and Craig Council chews tobacco on a play like that, and he just took the tobacco out and threw it away. You always wonder why he doesn't swallow it. Great effort, but that's all. And Nomar will get the base hit and the run batted in. And that makes it eight to one Brewers. He was so angry was counsel. He got up, reached into his mouth, took out that huge plug and threw it away. There's still one out and here is Jeff Kemp. That took a bite out of Estrada. Oh and one the count. Jeff lined out to center and flied out to center. Bill Hall in the position he was in in the first inning after they had moved him, and it's exactly where Kent hit the ball. No marred first. 8 1 Brewer. And driven to left and deep. Back goes Jenkins to the track at the wall. It's gone. And the Dodgers wake up to score three. With one out here in the sixth inning, and Milwaukee's lead is eight to three. For Jeff Kemp, that would be his seventh home run, 25 runs batted in. And for Jeff Supon, it would be the sixth home run that he has allowed. So it is Brewers eight, Dodgers three, one out in the sixth inning. So Jeff starting to zero in with his home runs. 
And Supon realizing he's back in the game. And had he been daydreaming at all, leading 8 0, Dodgers nudge him a little. Martin has flied to right, grounded to third. A strike. Oh, and two the count to Russell, Luis Gonzalez on deck. Brewer scored a run in the second, a run in the third, a run in the fourth, and then five in the sixth. And the Dodgers unable to recover yet. Ground ball to Weeks. Two down. And the batter will be Luis Gonzalez, who walked and flied to center. The fielder, Luis Gonzalez. Supon has made nine previous starts and piled up 61 innings. He has one complete game. So here's Gonzo walk fly to center 0 for 1 and take a look at the way they play Gonzalez. There's a left fielder but there are only three men on the infield. Craig Council looks like the shortstop. Ricky Weeks is way out in shallow right field. J.J. Hardy moves over to the second base side. And fielder is deep. One and one. You say to yourself, if he hits a ground ball to Ricky Weeks in right field, will Weeks be able to throw him out? He's so deep out there. Two and one. And two and two. We've seen teams load up the left side for Kent. We've seen the Dodgers load up the right side on Bonds. But this is a wrinkle to have weeks so far out there in right field. Still two and two. Eight runs, 12 hits for the Brewers, three runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Waiting his turn on deck, Andy LaRoche. Supon turns to check the count. It's three and two. And pulled down the line, hooking foul and out of play. That was a changeup, and Gonzo way out in front of it and turned it and pulled it too much. Three balls, two strikes. And a little pop fly, and it will be Weeks out there in right field. Well, they played him right, eh? <laughs> so the Dodgers get three, try to get back in the game, and at the end of six, it's 8 3 Milwaukee. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. And by Southern California Ford, not just miles per gallon, but more fun per gallon. Brewers leading the Dodgers 8-3 as we go to the seventh inning, and Joe Bimel is on the mound. And Prince Fielder fouls it off. Though so it's been Tomko for five and a third, Billingsley for two thirds, and now Joe. We're getting the paid attendance. We'll pass it along in a minute. Oh, and two to Prince Fielder. 
paid attendance tonight 33,446. 33,446. And tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf. Fastball on the hands to Kent. Plenty of time. One away. The fielder grounding out. That'll bring up Johnny Estrada. And it'll turn John around about right handed. Estrada hitting 280 left, 286 right. John has six home runs, three left and three right. All the way. Brewers trying to win their 28th game. Dodgers trying to win their 26th. First time that the Dodgers and the Brewers meet where each team is in first place. And as we mentioned at the start, the Dodgers have really given Milwaukee a bad time, beating them 8 out of 10 here at Dodgers Stadium over the last couple of years. And a total of 22 of 31 at Dodger Stadium since 98. Fastball, back of first, down the line, no more. So two down, and Jeb Jenkins Buck coming up as Estrada goes back into the dugout. Jenkins flied to left, flied to right, walked, came around to score a run. Ball one. Brewers eight runs, 12 hits. They have two home runs and two doubles. The Dodgers three runs, four hits. They have a home run by Kent and a double by Furk Hall. Two and oh the count to Jeff Jenkins. Jeff Kent coming up with a key home run his seventh of the year. Grounded foul outside of third down the line. Though Jenkins still there. Two balls and one strike to Jeff. The former Trojan of SC big man on campus. And he's a big man in Milwaukee. He's been with the club since 1998. 200 home runs. Out the way. Meanwhile, Mike Maddox waving a towel towards the bullpen. I'm wondering if the phone doesn't work. The boys in the pen are looking, but they're not quite sure what he means or who he wants. All the way. Joe Bimel, the third Dodger pitcher. Tomko, Billingsley, and now Joe. Now they're on the phone. All three. I mean, that's going way back to see them wave from the dugout to get a pitcher up. Chris Sperling, a right hander, answers the wave of the towel. And there's a ground ball backhanded by LaRoche. Nice bit of footwork there by Nomar. And the Brewers go one, two, three. And at the end of six and a half innings, Milwaukee eight and the Dodgers three. Oh, yes, being serenaded by Dad. Take me out to the ball game. And nothing like the best seat in the house. Meanwhile, we're right to play. And a strike to Andy LaRoche. 
LaRoche, Ethier, and Bimel spot, and Jonathan Broxton is up in the Dodger bullpen. One ball and one strike to Andy. Hit into a force play, fly to center, 0 for 2. Jeff Supon, who has one complete game this year, ball two, two and one. Jeff had his toughest inning in the sixth inning when he had to make 28 pitches. Two and one. And ball three. And looking at Supon's work, he had his complete game against St. Louis. He beat them seven to one. That's a strike. Supon came into the game with an earned run average of 3.2. Three and two. Fouled away. Brian Schaus, a left hander, and Matt Wise, a right hander, get up now as Ned Yost told Sperling to sit down. Three and two to LaRoche. Andy walking. So Andy. Gets his 13th walk this year. Third walk given up by Supon. And the batter will be Andre Ethier, who fouled out and grounded out 0 for 2. We're in the seventh. 8 to 3 in favor of the Brewers. Wilson Betamete will bat for Joe Bimo. And Supon now has made 101 pitches. When he had his complete game against St. Louis, he made 117. That's foul. 0 and 1. So 117. The game before that, he went eight innings and made 115. And his last game, 16th of May at Philadelphia, he made 100. Though he can still give Ned Yost a few more pitches, especially. With a five run lead. 0 and 1. One ball and one strike to Andre, hitting 273. Three home runs, 22 runs batted in. And hooked down the line, foul and out of play in the lower deck. A change up down. And he just pulled it too much, so LaRoche back to first. One ball and two strikes. Fast ball pulled down the right field line. LaRoche is on his way to third. They will hold him on the single by Ethier. So it looks like Jeff Supon is on very thin ice now as the batter will be Wilson Betamy. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, will be the first one to go out there. Fastball in just below the belt. And Ethia turns on it, singles over the head of Prince Fielder. So first and third, nobody out. And Wilson Betamy, who has had some success as a pinch hitter coming up. Betamy coming off the bench is four for five with three home runs and six runs batted in. Supon has now made 105 pitches. One thing, if you're coming off the bench, you've noticed the pattern that Supon has made a first pitch strike to 21 of the 26 hitters he's faced. So coming off the bench, you certainly don't want to get behind. And I'm sure it would not be a surprise if better meet swung at a strike. Nope. 0 and 1. 
So sure enough, Supong got the strike. And breaking ball missed. One ball, one strike to Wilson Betamete, hitting 179, hitting 186 left. He has Andy LaRoche at third, Andre Ethier at first. Brewers lead 8 3. Fast ball away, ball two. Juan Pierre on deck. Supon holding a splitter and a strike. Benamit, a little unhappy on the call, doesn't say anything. Two and two. And a flare base hit into center. Scoring is LaRose. Stopping at second is Ethier. It is eight to four, Brewers, as the Dodgers try to get back into the game. The better meet hits one into center field to score LaRose. And for better meet now, pretty remarkable set of numbers. He is five for six with seven runs batted in as a pinch hitter. And Ned Yost with Juan Pierre coming up will go to the bullpen and we'll be back. Milwaukee with two home runs tonight by Fielder and Estrada to give them 60. The Dodgers in comparison to the 60 home runs for Milwaukee have 24. And the 24th was the seventh home run of the year by Jeff Kemp. So the Dodgers, who have been pummeled and pushed around in the last four games, now trying to come back. Jeff Supon comes out, leading eight to four, with two runners his responsibility. So Jeff can't lose. He either wins or has nothing to do with it. And Brian Schaus. Schaus out of Illinois. A veteran at 38. And Pierre, a roll of the fielder who gets one, and that's all. The run is at first and third now as Ethi advances to third on the force play. The fielder falling down but still got the front man. Shortstop, number 50. Now with a left hander up there facing Raphael for call. And you would imagine that it will be another battle, and whoop, here comes Ned Yost. The Schaus got the left hand hit of Pierre, but for call, of course, can turn around to bat right handed. So it's a question does he want for call to hit left handed against Weiss or right handed against Schaus? And he hasn't made his mind up yet. For call is hitting 346 right. So they'll better turn him around. So Schaus goes out. Wise will come in. For call will bat left handed and we'll be back. Don't forget photo day Sunday at 110. The Cubs will be here at Dodger Stadium and you can take pictures of current and former Dodgers. Compliments of Universal Studios Hollywood. Gates to the field open at 1110. For information, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. Matt Wise, local boy out of Montclair and Laverne. He is 6'4", 200. He'll be 32 in November. Went to Cal State Fullerton. And as a kid, he had a coach who is here tonight, a retiring policeman named Mike Jacobellis. So Matt has a little extra in inspiration tonight as Officer Jack Abellis will be retiring after I believe it's 32 years on the force. So Pierre at first, Ethier at third, and a strike to for call. 
for Matt. He grew up attending a lot of Dodger games. He had a spot for the Brewers and pitched five scoreless innings here in 2004. What a thrill that was. There goes Pierre and a swing and a miss by for call. So Pierre steals second. And with runners at second and third and one out, Dodgers trying to get back into the game. Matt Wise, after pitching in Dodger Stadium and fulfilling a dream in May three years ago came up with a bad arm and wound up having to have Tommy John surgery. Now the strike two pitch on the way over the top swung on and missed so he takes care of Raphael for call big over the top pitch and that'll bring up no more. That's a big 12 to 6 curveball. Fastball change in curve. That's what Matt brings to the dance. And after striking out for Paul, he'll now work on Nomar. Eight runs, 12 hits for the Brewers. Four runs, six hits for the Dodgers, who have runners at second and third with the two out. And ball one. And looking at Matt Wise and Garcia Parra, Nomar, two for seven, one of them a home run, and four runs batted in. 8 4 Brewers. That's a strike inside corner, off speed pitch. One and one. The leaf here down the line from third. Pierre away from second with two out. Fastball missed. Two and one. At 6 4, and by extending that arm and coming right up over the top, he really has that good downhill delivery. Two and one. Two and two. Off speed. With all those elbows and kneecaps, the full extension, it's like he's thrown out of the sky. And then when he pulls the string and throws the changeup, pretty hard to stay with him. Deuce is wild now. And a ground ball up the middle, but Reach was playing him behind second base and throws him out. So like real estate, everything is so important in baseball. Location, location, location. Dodgers get one, Brewers lead 8 4. Nancy B. Heffley serenading the crowd with the theme song from Man of La Mancha. Meanwhile, Milwaukee leading the Dodgers 8 to 4. Dodgers thoroughly frustrated, losing and leaving two men at second and third. So Jonathan Broxton becomes the fourth Dodger pitcher, and he'll be facing Bill Hall. Craig Council, and we'll see about Matt Wise. So Big John trying to keep the Brewers quiet. He's two and one. Great ERA of 1.1, and the ratio a little more than three to one strikeouts to walks. Hall struck out and then single twice. And a strike. Well, John hits 94 on the gun. Hall batting 269. 0 and 1. 0 and 2. Roxton started 94. Next pitch 95. The setup man for the Brewers, formerly the closer, Derek Turnbow, is now loosening up. And then if he gets through the eighth. Francisco Cordero will be asked to lock it up. Oh, and two the count to Bill Hall. Ball one. So he's made three pitches right out of Sesame Street 94, 95, and 96.
see you. So one out in the eighth, and in the background they play the music. The Big bad baseman, John. Craig Council. The one out. Breaking ball, and Hill Hall didn't come close to it. Craig Council coming up. Interesting with Craig and his unusual batting style with his hands held high up over his head. Three years ago, he reached base six times on catcher's interference, of all things. And that's ball one. The National League record for reaching on catches interference seven Dale Barra of Pittsburgh. The Major League record eight Roberto Kelly of the Yankees. One and oh the count. Check swing ball two no swing says Randy Marsh. Ironic too when you think about it that Dale Barra the son of a catcher a Hall of Fame catcher would hold a record for catchers interference. Two and oh. Gabe Gross left hand hitter is on deck to bat for wives. Looking it right into the catcher's mitt. Which is the way they teach you as a little kid to play this game. One reason why Council has lasted so long, he's solid on fundamentals. 3 0. And ball four. The Craig Council gets the walk, and now the batter is Gabe Gross. Born in Baltimore and lives in Dauphin, Alabama. Your attention, please. Gabe went to school at Auburn. Wise, number 18. Originally Gabe signed Gross. by the Blue Jays, came to the Brewers last year and hit 274. He has some power. He had nine home runs, 38 runs batted in, and those are his numbers this year. And there goes Council, the pitch outside, the throw behind him. Great tag by Rafael Furcal. So Council, who had stolen three out of four, and a strong throw by Martin and a good tag by Furcal. Right there, got him on the left hip. There. The council hung out to drive for sure. Two down. And Gross up there, one ball and no strikes. Two and all the count. Gross a big fella. He's 6'3 and 210. Two balls, no strikes. Gross broke in with the Brewers by hitting a home run. So he became the fifth player in Brewers history to homer in his first at bat with the club coming over from Toronto. Royce Clayton, Glendon Rush, Rob Deere, and Mike Keegan all did it. 3 0. Right, 3 and 1. Two down, eighth inning, eight to four Brewers. And he walked in. The so Broxton walks two in the inning, but Council was out trying to steal. And the batter will be second baseman. Ricky Weeks, Ricky Weeks having a career night with four hits. Single in the first, doubled in the third, single in the fifth, singled in the sixth. Three runs batted in, so he's really having a night. Yeah. 
And a strike. See Ricky Weeks wiggling that bat a little bit. That's got to be a little tough to walk up there and start doing that Gary Sheffield shuffle against a guy who can throw 96. Just like Gary. Wow. Right. Off speed at 85. Ricky with the four hits. Remember, he had been in a slump. He was four for 27, had the sore wrist. They sat him down for four days, and he has come roaring back. 0 and 2. Didn't get around on that, and it was an off speed pitch. So, no runs, no hits, a man left, and at the end of seven and a half, eight four, Brewers. Three rather remarkable bullpens, and two of them are working tonight. The Dodgers, when leading after seven, are 20 and zero. The Brewers are 23 and one, and the Mets are 21 and one. Derek Turnbow is now the setup man, Mike Broxton. Two years ago, Derek was the closer. He not only saved 39, he also had a record of seven and one. But then last year he struggled. Oh, sure, he had 24 saves, but he was four and nine, and his earned run average was almost seven. So they decided, all right, we'll make him the setup man. And the big man out of Tennessee volunteered to do it. He's 6'3 and 210, and he'll be facing Jeff Kent to start it off. Kent 0 for 3 against him in the pad. Fastball, uppercut, miss 0 and 1. And that fastball was clocked at 97. Hello. Wow. Fastball, slider, change up, and curve. Oh, and one. Check, no swing. One ball and one strike. Derek Turnbow, as a kid, spent a lot of time going to Bush Stadium. Growing up near Nashville, he was a big Cardinals fan. Said that he idolized Ken Griffey Jr. Mom, the manager of a grocery store, took good care in making sure she'd feed him properly. One and two the count, six three, two ten. Derek, one of 30 players selected for the U.S. Olympic qualifying team four years ago. Then he became better known as a closer. He had a bobblehead doll design last year, and it came complete with his trademark bushy hair. Fastball hit the right center and deep on his horse at the track is Gwynn. So Jeff Kent just misses, sticking one on the board. Nice play by young Tony. And we have one out in the Kendrick, eighth inning. Number 55, Turnbow. In looking at his numbers, he is one and two. Earned run average of 3.9. And in 18 innings, he has given up one home run. His strikeout to walk ratio, very good. 26 strikeouts, only eight walks. And here is Russell Martin, 0 for 3. Fastball, ball one. And he hits 97 again on the gun. He's actually throwing harder than Broxton, and that's something to say. One ball and no strikes. Fastball got away from the Prada. Two and all the count. Turnbow was originally selected by the Phillies 10 years ago. Two 
Two balls and no strikes. Ball three. Last April, Turnbow signed a three year deal with the Brewers. It replaced a one year deal that he had. They realized just how valuable he is. 3 0. Oh. Always pitching from a stretch, but he still has made one change. That's right. He used to stand on the third base side of the rubber and pitch out of a stretch. And then last year, he moved over to the first base side because he figured he got more plate coverage with his slider. So you see his right foot on the edge of the first base side of the rubber. Three and one. How back? Well, that was 96. Boy, does he throw hard. Turnbow said he's trying very hard to calm down, not to pitch with so much intensity. And by calming down, he found out he can still throw just as hard. As he said, sometimes in the past, I get too violent. I try too hard out there. Three and two to Martin. Little roll of the short, Hardy in a hurry. In the dirt, backhanded nicely by Fielder. So two out in the eighth inning. The and the battle will be Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez one for two in the pass against Turnbow. So for the Dodgers their basic plan to win a tough game Broxton in the eighth and Saito in the ninth for the Brewers their plan Turnbow in the eighth Cordero in the ninth and for the Dodgers Saito begins to throw in the bullpen because he hasn't had any work. Saito did not pitch in the Angels series because he had nothing to protect. Two out, eighth inning, eight four Brewers. Gonzo with LaRoche on deck. Dodgers had second and third in the seventh inning. So they had a look at the game, only to have for call strikeout and Garcia Parr to ground out. Foul ball. One and one to count. Turnbull knows the effects of throwing so hard. About six years ago, he was pitching for the Arkansas Travelers in the minor leagues. He threw a fastball and his elbow snapped. He said he heard a pop and he had to have surgery to repair it. Two pins in the fractured bone in the right elbow and forearm. A drive to right and deep. Back to the wall goes Glenn and can't make it. Wow, or did he? Let's see. He didn't make it. Boy, was that close. Gonzalez just does get it over the glove of Tony Gwynn. In fact, when Tony went up and he closed the glove, it looked like he might have caught it. The so Gonzo clears the right field wall. That makes it Brewers eight and the Dodgers five. Take another look. Fastball down and in. And now here's Quinn up. And it disappeared. It disappeared quickly. So Gonzalez hits his fifth home run of the year. Dodgers get a little bit closer. And the batter now, Andy LaRoche. Check swing. It's going to cost a strike. Gonzo's last home run was against David Wells at San Diego. That was the end of April. So eight five Brewers. And another check swing. Oh and two the count.
for Turnbow, the second home run that he's allowed this year. In the dirt. One and two the count. So Kent almost cleared the wall, but Gwynn caught it. Gonzalez did clear the wall. Gwynn couldn't catch it. And it's 8 5 Milwaukee. Tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf. And then Wednesday night, Capuano and Penny. Fastball off the plate. Two and two. Fastball. High pop foul down the line. Coming over in position and picking it off is Gwynn, and that's that. So the Dodgers get one on the home run by Gonzalez, and at the end of eight, Brewers eight, Dodgers five. The Brewers leading the Dodgers eight to five. The Brewers led one nothing, two nothing, three nothing, eight nothing. Dodgers tried to come back with three, one, and one. And now all of a sudden, they've run out of time. They're in the ninth inning. Takashi Saito comes in because he has been idle. And he comes in with his 13 for 13 saves. It also means that he has converted his last 23 save opportunities, but there is nothing to save here. All he's asked to do now is get in some work and try to get the Brewers out. Gwynn, Hardy, and Fielder coming up in the ninth inning. Gwynn, one for four. Bunt, good bunt. Saito on it, quickly throws him out. So Gwynn, who had doubled in the sixth inning, Shortstop. bunts back to Saito, and the batter will be J.J. Hardy. James Jerry Hardy, 0 for 4. The two of the fellows who usually make a lot of noise, Hardy and Jenkins, have been quiet, and without them, the Brewers have eight runs on 12 hits. Right. Oh, and one. Saito in there tonight because his last game, five days ago, he pitched an inning against St. Louis, so he needs a little work. One and one. One and two. To look ahead. When the Dodgers come up in the ninth inning, Andre Ethier will start it off. Then it would be Saito Spot and Pierre. And it'll be Francisco Cordero, who is 17 for 17, pitching for Milwaukee. Fastball. Two and two. Hardy hit into a double play, flied out and struck out twice. Whoop. And make it three times. So a tough night for J.J. Hardy. So it's the same pattern. Pujols didn't hit. Cardinal scored eight. Guerrero didn't hit. Angel scored nine. Neither Jenkins nor Hardy hit. And the Brewers have scored eight. And here is big Prince Fielder. Hit a 460 foot home run. Since then, has struck out, popped up, grounded out. Oh, and one. One and one.
Fastball sliced down the left field line. Foul. So Prince will come back. One and two. Two home runs for the Brewers. Two home runs for the Dodgers. Two and two to count the fielder. Johnny Estrada with a home run and a single on deck. So fielder still hacking away. Boy, he is a mountain of a man, isn't he? Now back again. Prince, if he does have a nickname, and he got it in the minor leagues, they called him Tank. 22 inch arms. They say he has legs that can press 1,000 pounds 12 times. And another high drive. I mean, he hit that thing out of state. Whoa! So Prince Fielder not only can press a thousand pounds he can take the best of the Dodger pitchers and hit monstrous home runs. The fielder now has 14 home runs. He had 28 last year and so he is certainly on a pace to hit more than that. Wow. He really puts on a show. Look at unleashing all that power. Full extension of the arms, great follow through. And the batter now, Johnny Estrada, who follows that with a pop fly. For call goes out and puts it away. In case you wonder about Takashi Saito, that would be the third home run that he has given up. So Prince Fielder does it a second time, and the Brewers lead 9 to 5. Milwaukee takes a 9 to 5 lead into the bottom of the ninth inning and instead of seeing Francisco Cordero the Dodgers will see Chris Sperling look at the swing Prince Fielder we referred to as a mountain of a man maybe we should call him a volcano gets all of it and then lets the left hand come off the bat to complete the swing so the big man hits two in a game. It is the sixth time in his young career that he's had two home run games. He had three two run home run games at Wrigley Field. 600, uh, 262 pounds unleashed. The first home run was 462. I'm not sure about the second one, but uh, it was a monstrous thing and thine own. And so now here Chris Sperling out of Dayton Ohio originally drafted by the Yankees 10 years ago. Eighth year foul ball 0 and 1. Andre eighth year fouled out grounded out single to right one for three. Chris Sperling 65 and 240. He'll be 30 the end of June. And a high fly ball to left center and deep, but Jenkins is there. So one out in the ninth inning. Do up is Sido and Olmedo signs will come up and bat for him. Wilson Betamete pinch it earlier and had a base hit to drive in a run.
So signs checking in against Spurley. In checking Chris Sperling is another pitcher that had to go Tommy John surgery which is why he missed 2004. So another fellow battling his way back. On one. Breaking ball one and one. Fastball and slider. Brewers trying to beat the Dodgers for the third time in four meetings. One and two. And let's see his signs are. He hurt his right leg. The nasty slider, they say it is a good one, but it's a little inconsistent. As Sperling has broken off a couple of dandies to signs. ERA of less than two and a half. Strike out the walk. Eight and two. Two balls, two strikes. So he's given signs, nothing but sliders. Tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf. Fastball and a one hopper right at Ricky Weeks. So the Dodgers are down to their last out, the Dodgers, and Juan Pierre, the leadoff man, is coming up. So the Dodgers came into the game with a little three-game losing streak. The Dodgers had beaten the Brewers eight out of ten at Dodgers Stadium over the last couple of years, but not tonight, as the Brewers scored one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth. And then broke the game open in the sixth. If you remember in the series in Anaheim, the Angels broke the game open in the sixth. Then they broke the second game open in the sixth. Then they broke the third game open in the fifth. And now tonight, the Dodgers see the game broken up in the sixth. And of course, Prince Fielder breaking up chairs, hitting monstrous home runs in the second and in the ninth. Foul ball. One and two. So in the parlance of the fight game, the Dodgers trying to go head to head with the heavyweights. The Dodgers hit two home runs. The Brewers hit three. Randy Wolf will be out there on the firing line tomorrow night against Ben Sheets. How has Randy Wolf done against Prince Fielder, for instance? Fielder is one for three. Yep, with a home run. Well, they'll go after again tomorrow night. Two and two to Pierre. Look out. I got him, I think. Yep. So one Pierre hit by the pitch. And the battle will be Raphael for call. Just kept boring in, got him on the right Such leg. A, number 15. Just Rafael above the knee. Right there. Mm -hmm. So Pierre at first, two down, and Rafael for call had an infield single, walk, doubled, and struck out. Start some fastball for a strike. On deck, Omar Garcia Parra. 9 5 Brewers. And another fastball. So you're on deck, you see him throwing all those sliders to signs, and then you finally come up and he starts you with two fastballs. So Omar waits. 0 and 2. 1 and 2. 
three fastballs in a row to Raphael for call. One, two. Slider roll down to fielder. He'll flip it over to Sperling, and that's it. Dodgers now have lost four in a row. Their lead on San Diego is cut to half a game, and needless to say, the player of the game would be French Fielder. And according to the measurements, his first home run, 462 feet, well back, oh, maybe seven rows from the top of the pavilion. And then his second home run, Measured 438 feet, so he had a nice night. Prince Fielder, his two home runs traveled approximately 900 feet. So the Brewers, nine runs, 13 hits. The Dodgers, five runs, seven hits. Tomorrow night, Ben Sheets and Randy Wolf, and hope you'll be out here with us if you possibly can. Well, once again, the final score Dodgers go down to defeat. Brewers 9, Dodgers 5. Stay tuned for Dodgers Live, and it starts right now. Good night, everybody.